In this video, we're going to learn how to write a C++ program to write the elements of a vector to a file. The first thing we'll do is include the vector library so we can create a vector. We'll also include the fstream library so we can use the ofstream object type to write to a file. Then down here, we'll create our vector. We'll have vector string and we'll create a vector to store strings called test, and we'll push some strings onto the vector. We'll have test.pushback, and we'll push the string string1 onto the vector. We'll have test pushback, and we'll push the string string2 onto the vector, and we'll have test.pushback, and we'll push the string string3 onto the vector. We'll prompt the user for the name of the file to store the vector elements. We'll store that file name into this string file name variable. We'll prompt the user with cout and then file name colon. Then we'll call getLine and we'll pass it cin and file name. And the getLine function is going to store the string the user enters into the file name string variable. Next, we'll create our OFStream object. We'll have here OFStream and we'll call the object outfile. So OFStream is going to allow us to write to the file. The first thing we need to do is open the file. So here we'll have outfile and we'll call the open method of the OFStream object. We'll have open and we'll pass it the file name of the file to open. So we'll pass it file name, the file name that the user entered. Now the file could fail to open and we should check for this before continuing to work with the file. So here we'll have if outfile.fail is true, then we'll have cout and error opening file followed by an end line. So this fail method is going to return true if there's been a problem opening the file. And in that case, we're going to output this error message. We're also gonna have here, return one. Return one is going to stop the execution of the program. And returning one, instead of returning zero, is a signal to the shell or the terminal that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. Now at this point here, we know the file is good to work with, and we can write the elements of our vector to the file. We'll use a range-based for loop to do that. We'll have here for auto element colon test, where test was the name of our vector. And here we'll output each element in the vector. We'll have out file and then element and then end L to put each element on a new line. So this is a range-based for loop where for each element in our vector, this loop body is going to run. And here we're using the OFStream object with the stream insertion operator to output our element into that file. And end L is going to output a new line. So each element in our vector is going to be on its own line in the file. Now I should point out that with this range-based for loop, we could have used string here for the type of element because our vector stores string elements. But instead, we're going to use auto. Auto is going to leave it to the compiler. The compiler is going to determine the exact type of element based on how it's initialized. That's going to make this code more flexible. So if we change the type of value that our vector stores later, this code will still work. And we'll do that too. Now, after we've written the elements to the file, we're done working with the file and we should then close our access to the file. We'll use outfile.close to do this. So the close method is going to close our access to the file. We'll save the program and try it out. So we'll save it and we'll compile it. And then we'll run it. I'll enter in file.out and if we check out file.out, 
it does contain string one, string two, and string three all on their own lines. And this code can still work even if our vector doesn't store strings. So for example, we could change our vector to store ints. We'll have here vector int, and we'll have pushback one and two and three. And we'll save our program and compile it and run it. We'll enter in file.out for the file name again. Then we'll check out the file and we get one, two, three. So the program is working even though the vector now stores ints. Using the auto keyword in our range-based for loop did make our code more general, but we're also using the stream insertion operator to actually output the value. And the stream insertion operator is supported by all standard C++ types. We can actually overload the stream insertion operator to make it work with our own user-defined types. So for example, when we use class to define a new type of object, we could actually overload the stream insertion operator to make this code work with that type of object that we've defined. Operator overloading is a bit of a big topic. So I'll post a link in the video description going over that topic specifically. As an alternative to operator overloading, if our objects had getter methods that allowed us to access the values that we want to output to the file, then we could use the getter methods inside the range based for loop we could have element.getValue and element.getValue2, and so on. So this is how we can output the elements of a vector to a file in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.